So why am I standing in a dark parking lot? Because a dark parking lot is the real world. It's an element of the real world that we all find ourselves in. Where you're from a defensive capacity on your own. And the reason I'm bringing this up is for a lot of us that do what we would call training from a firearms capacity, we have this illusion in our mind sometimes that what we're doing on a pistol range, shooting at a two-dimensional target, an FBI Q or a B-52 or whatever you're shooting at, it could be Barney or, or Osama bin Laden, that we somehow think we, that this is translating into where I'm standing right now. Shooting on that two-dimensional plane on an indoor pistol range that won't let you draw from the holster, that won't let you shoot rapidly, that can't let you shoot while you're moving, that can't let you transition to multiple targets. And we find ourselves in these very confined, from a tactical perspective, environments, convincing ourselves that what we're doing is really training. When the reality of what we're doing is practicing fundamentals, and that's training. You, you, you are training yourself for the fundamentals, which is a good thing. Uh, accuracy, you know, sight picture, sight alignment, trigger control, all these things. Even flash front sight, draw stroke, that kind of stuff, stance. You, there are things you can do on a pistol range that do translate to some, real, uh, some, some part of the real world, but it's not the whole picture. And so what I want to talk about is two concepts, okay, that I think need to be part of your training approach. If what you think you're doing matters here in the real world. And the first one's hardwiring. Hardwiring is expensive. Hardwiring is logistically taxing. Not everybody has an opportunity, either financially or logistically, to seek out hardwire training. What hardwiring is, is it puts you in a situation where you're in this environment. You're in the dark. You're in an open -ed space. Or you're in a place that lets you do the things that translate to help you win in this environment. Shooting with, across multiple targets. Assessing on the fly weapons malfunctions, reloads, those kind of things. Things that could happen in the real world. Um, uh, uh, fighting across multiple targets, worrying about overpenetration in a three-dimensional world where there's good guys and bad guys potentially. And so hardwiring is when you seek out training that gives you the opportunity to, to duplicate the stress and the um, factors present in the real world. And that's very important and I think everybody on some level can seek out that type of training if you really make it a priority. Um, but what everybody can do for free is soft wiring. And all soft wiring is, is I'm, I'm putting it up here. I'm putting the situation up here. I'm drilling myself. I'm doing a tabletop in my head. And basically what I want you to do, and what you should be doing, is what ifing yourself to failure. What if I walk to my vehicle and I see feet or a crouching figure in the shadow behind my truck and I'm 100 feet away from safety and I'm 10 feet away from my assailant where you know it's on like Donkey Kong to the break of dawn and there's no way out of it but to win. You, can, you can't always hardwire the elements of that gunfight, but you can softwire them. You can put yourself in the what-if scenario, well, what would I do if I'm in that? And if you got a good answer for that and, and, and you feel like it's a logical and reasonable thing to do, okay, then take it to the next step. Okay, well, I've assessed what I'm going to do with this specific, specific person. What if another one pops up from over here? Or I hear footsteps behind me and the guy behind my truck hasn't presented himself yet. Okay, so I've got a known threat and a potential threat behind me. Where do I devote my attention? That's the type of what if question you should be putting yourself in. What if I'm with my family? What if I'm holding my toddler? What if I don't have my gun on me that day? Or what if it's in deep concealment and I, it's going to take me a second to get to it? And what you'll do is you'll find yourself very quickly getting to the ifs that you have no answer to. The impossible if. And you really got to think about it and you ask questions and seek out trainers and find people more knowledgeable that can help you answer that if and you'll be able to. The first level of if here and there and everywhere, you'll have an answer to eventually. So then you take it to the next level and what you will do, you'll find a situation where you, there is no answer. There is no way to win. You what if yourself to failure. And a lot of people are reluctant to do that because they don't want to come in, they don't want to come to terms with the fact that you are a finite, at least in the physical world, creature that there are situations where you can't win. There's no defense to a 300-yard sniper shot to the back of your head. Now, thankfully, we don't really face that every day uh, or probably ever in, in the environments we're living in here in America. Um, but there's ways to put yourself to failure. And you should do that. What I find is a lot of people, that, especially those that don't have a lot of training invested, real-world training, or they haven't sought out formal training, as soon as they get to those uncomfortable ifs, they stop. And I, they do what I call the ostrich approach. They just stick their head in the sand, and they're in denial about the if they don't have an answer to. The problem is they'll stop too soon. They'll stop before it's really an impossible if. And they just want to be in denial about the fact that there is no answer at this specific moment to this if. 
And what you're doing is you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to put yourself in better positions. Because there may no there may be no answer to your if in the situation you put yourself in, but could you avoid that situation? The more you think about these ifs, the, the better off you're going to be. Sure, it's a great and wonderful to be able to find a place where you can shoot in an environment like this or that, d that, that duplicates the types of factors, like I said, that, that are present in an environment like this. But you can software for free all the time. Anytime I find myself in a situation where there is no stress and I'm relatively safe and I can devote mental capacity without pulling myself fully from reality and making myself more at risk than I need to be, I put myself in these what if situations in the moment. I'm walking to my truck. It's dark. What if this happens? Uh, it's something you should be doing. It costs you nothing. Don't be so afraid of the question you don't have an answer to that you don't ask any questions at all. Don't be a gamer and think you're a trainer. Um, be, be someone who's willing to do both when they're appropriate. If you see yourself as somebody who's preparing yourself, you're a concealed carry permit holder, you're a sheepdog mentality kind of person, don't kid yourself into thinking that shooting that two-dimensional plane, FBIQ target, with no transitions, no communication, no movement, no rounds inbound, that what you're doing translates fully to the real world. Because it just doesn't. Um, the real world's out there, and it's waiting for you. And if you can't drill for it, in reality, at least soft wire it up here. Okay? Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. It's a cliche, but it's true. So remember the real world's out there, and it's just waiting for you. And the bad guys are looking for the path of least resistance. I don't want it to happen to anybody. I definitely don't want it to happen on my block. Daggum Skippy, it's not going to happen to me.